Okay, let's try to analyze now the flight with some real data uh, to understand better what you have seen in the video. But first I'd like to show you the copter, so this is the Solo with the gimbal attached. And one thing I want to point out that this is really a bad gimbal. So I mean first the yaw motor has a lot of play to it when the frame is extremely flexible. So it's not st as stiff as it should be. When I have these motors here and they look small and cute and nice, but unfortunately they have extremely large motor cocking, so this means that the gimbal really has uh, problems to stabilize it well. And an additional last point is you might notice that the gimbal is hard attached to the copter, so there's no vibration damping or anything like this, so it's just connected to that, uh, so this will be, be uh, important later. And I do this just because of laziness. Okay, so this is the copter. Let's go back to the data, and this is recorded with the anti-locker tool, and yeah. And what is shown here is now the uh, pitch roll and yaw data of the IMU-1, that is of the camera IMU, and the blue thing here, the blue data here is the yaw data, so there's not much information in that, I take that away. And then the red data is the pitch data, so you can see here that I go to uh, that it goes here to 90 degrees. This had been where I tilted the camera down. So that's also not very interesting. It's more interesting to look at the noise here. So I zoom that a bit. And what you can notice then is that there are six pronounced spikes. So here are two, here are two and here are two, and these are exactly the situations where the gimbal was very heavily shaking. So what happened here is that I did this narrow turns 
and I actually could see in this turns when I was flying uh, past, closely near uh, to me, that the gimbal was really going like this. I mean, it was extremely rattling and shaking. And this is uh, the situations you also have seen uh, in the video. Okay, otherwise the gimbal stabilization is not fantastic. Uh, so this here is about a level of 0 0.2 degrees. Uh, so the gimbal easily goes to 0 0.2 degrees, yeah, maybe 0 0.1, so that's not fantastic, but that's because it's a bad gimbal. Now an another interesting point I'd like to show you is we can look at the accelerations as measured by the IMU-1, that is by the camera IMU, and again you very clearly can see here this rattling situations, and overall, okay, it looks how it looks like. And you also can see this uh, in, in the gyro data of the camera IMU, again here very pronounced, uh, this, this, this six rattling situations, and overall it's not too bad. However, when we look at the data for the IMU um, 2, which is hard attached to the copter and so to say gives a, a good measurement of the copter vibrations, then let's compare this again. So here it's the raw data of the camera IMU. Again, very clear. Here this 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 rating. Oh, it's not. So I should zoom it out a bit. Okay. Uh, so here this are this this rattling situations, very pronounced. Uh, and okay, that's how it looks like. But then you compare it now to the accelerometer data on the IMU2, which measure, measures the copter vibrations. Then this is really a mess. Uh, so and this is obviously uh, uh, so the gimbal is quite working well despite of all these vibrations and noise uh, which you have here. Okay, but let's go to the real beef, namely the flight characteristics. So here you can see the velocity of the copter, and the blue curve is the horizontal, uh, the vertical uh, in the z direction, the, the velocity, and there's not much going on. So I take this out. Now these are the velocity in the xy directions, and we can look at the peak position somewhere here. So we end up with something like, like, uh, like 12, 13, 14 uh, meters per second. This is about 45 kilometers per hour. Now this data should show you that the copter was not flying slowly. Uh, it was nearly always flying with about this 40 kilometers per hour, and even in the terms. Now what is more interesting is to look at the accelerations. So and this is here the acceleration data. And again the blue line, there's not much happening. This is the Z direction. So I take this out. So here you can see now the accelerations in the X, Y direction. I zoom this a bit uh, so like this. So these are the acceleration in the X, Y directions and the horizontal direction. And we can again look at the magnitude and we find here something like 10 meter per second square, that is about 1 g. Uh, so this is, this, this is what I want to point out, that in the turns we have acce horizontal accelerations or centrifugal acceleration or centripetal accelerations or however you like to call that, of 1 g. Now to demonstrate this further, I calculated the magnitude of the accelerations in this xy direction, and this is this data here. So what you can see again, when we look at the value, uh, that the accelerations are about 1 g, horizontal acceleration of 1 g. And this is what I really want to point out, what this means. So when we look at this situation here, uh, so we have a, a gravitation downwards of 1 g, and now in addition in this turns, we have horizontal accelerations of 1 g. So this means that the copter aligns or the summed uh, acceleration um, aligns to about 45 degrees. Huh? So this means that the camera gimbal, which is experiences, experiencing these accelerations, uh, will have a horizontal tilt of 45 degrees. Now this horizontal tilt does not emerge immediately because that's how this uh, HRRS is working. There's a time constant to it which is about 10 seconds. So this means that when the camera is subjected to this accelerations, the camera will slowly tilt from zero degree from level to 45 degrees within about 10 seconds or plus minus something. Huh? So this means when you make a flight with 10 seconds 
with this acceleration present, then your camera would be at 45 degrees horizon tilt. Now we can look at the data, for example, at this piece of the data, and I zoom this out. So, okay, I'll give me a second. Okay, like this. So now you can see the data. Again, the acceleration here is about uh, with 10 meter per second square, which is about 1 g. So in this in this in this flight period, we indeed have about constant uh, constant horizontal acceleration of 1 g. And now we can look at the time. So this is 2.252 two seconds, and this is 2.64 seconds. So this flight period here has a duration of about 10 seconds or a bit more. So this means in this situation. The camera really should have tilted to about 45 degrees at the end of this flight path. But you clearly have not seen anything like this um, in, in, in the video. And this is really a demonstration of the effect of this horizon drift compensation, uh, so that you can do such a flight with about 10 seconds of horizontal accelerations of 1G, and yet the camera stays level. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.